Hello everyone, Pastor Winston here. We're continuing our study in the letters of John. We're in John 1, we're in verse 4, verses 11 through 16. So we're going to dive right into that. I'm going to diminish myself in order that he might increase. And um, we're going to, as I said, we're going to look at that. And then we're here talking about this Christian love and what is the origin of it was our last episode. And now at this particular time, we're looking at um, the inspiration of Christian love, which is episode 14. That's what we're talking about today, 11 through 16, as a byproduct, really, of God's loving generosity to us. So let's uh, start. You're going to see some exciting things. I really love this portion of scripture. It's so exciting and fun. There's so much about it. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Now, so right there, see that word if? That really bothers me a little bit. I really think it should be since God so loved us because it sort of fits the context better. Unfortunately, the ESV uses if, but the NIV uses since, and so does the New Living. So I kind of trend towards that for this particular verse. I just think it, it's more... Um, I don't, I don't find a lot of conditionality about God's love. I think it's unconditional love. And so um, I think that, that since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And no one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. But uh, we're going to look at th three basic ways here where uh, we see God's love reflected in us. And I lost my cursor here. I don't know where it went, but we'll just try punching something. There we go. And um, so a reflection of his divine love, and this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us. And sin is son to be the propitiation for our sins. So that's verse 10. That's before we get to 11. So there's that certainty again, right? He loved us. And sent his son. No one, to continue, no one has ever seen God if or when we love one another. When we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. So we're going to, you're going, that's going to happen. It's as, as if, it's, it's a true statement. When we love one another, God abides in us. And so his love is therefore perfected in us. Um, this, this whole idea of reflecting the love of God that's in us as he abides in us is, I mean, you see it in our church's motto even, to, to reflect the divine love that's already really been showered upon us. So that's the first way that the inspiration of, occurs for us. And then here's here's the second way, the unparalleled experience of it all. Um, wow, I mean, <clears throat> so listen to this. By this, God abides in us. This is that God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. Perfected in us. We know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And then 1 John 3, 24, comments on that in a sense. So whoever keeps his commandments abides in him and he in us by the spirit whom he has given us. And then you look at what Paul wrote in Ephesians 1, um, 13 and 14. In him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire it, to the praise of his glory. Just catch this. What this means, it's just that this means of the extraordinary grace and love for God and others to for the glory of God is the Holy Spirit. And, <clears throat> it, you know, in order that we more perfectly love you, Lord, and glorify your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And this spirit applies redemption. The God decrees it. The Son redeems. 
and the Holy Spirit applies the benefits of redemption. And when we do, when we do obey and we do the right thing, wow. I took care of a man for many years. His name was Maynard and went in for an MRI and uh, the orderly came in the room and uh, dropped off the gown and said, you know, get dressed. Well, Maynard couldn't. He's in a wheelchair. He didn't shower very often and his feet were filthy and his socks were worse. And um, there I was with Maynard. And so I had to undress him and get the gown on him. And I started with his feet. And when I knelt down to do that, it was an un, just an extraordinary unparalleled experience with the Spirit of God. He was there and I knew it because that really wasn't me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I did it, but I did. And God rewarded me by his enthusiasm into me with the Spirit. So, you know, enough about me. Let's move on here to the Word of God. And <clears throat> finally, the, the gospel pro proclamation of our testimony. In verses 14 through 16, it says, We have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God abides in him, and he in God. So, so we've come to know and to believe. So this is different. You know, we're, we know it, we believe it, that the love of, that God has for us God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. So, in summary, the gospel proclamation of our testimony, oops, it did not do that correctly, the inspiration of God's love by the Holy Spirit. We willingly take the obligation to love one another in love, not from anxiety of losing God's love or the threat of his wrath, but because he first loved us. And when we meet the obligation to love in obedience to God, the spirit which makes him known to us as an unparalleled experience, this was not my doing, but the Lord's work. And when our testimony of the gospel presses into our lives over and over again. This is wonderful news, folks. The Holy Spirit working within us, reminding us of everything that Jesus taught us. Is in you and me. And waits on us and even moves ahead of us. Enjoy your experience with the Holy Spirit this week and forever. <laughs> I'll see you soon. God bless.